Hey everyone, it's Jana from The Last Stitch. As some of you already know, I'm about to make my third sewing book. And this book will be about making jeans. So in order to make that happen, I will also have to sew up a set of jeans to photo photograph and also show you some examples on how you can alter the patterns to create different style of jeans. So I have a lot of jeans making in front of me. Let me tell you, this is an exhausting project. But in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of my plans and of course give you an update about the book and also give you some really neat jean sewing tips. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What I have here is a base jeans pattern that I've created, which is just three pieces so far, the front, the back and the joke. So this is just going to be the base template for all the alteration that I plan to do. So in the book, there will be instructions for making skinny jeans, for making bootcut jeans, uh, for making jeans with a straight out seam so you can use the selvage and some other design options as well. But in order to test that, to make sure that it will work, I need to do the same things right on my own jeans sewing pattern. So that's why I created this base pattern, which is like a straight legged jeans pattern. And then I'm of course going to do the different alterations and then I'm going to show them in the book so you can also alter if you have a base pattern that you like but you want to make some changes, just change the jean style. So that's the premises of why I created this large shackle pattern. So I won't actually use this pattern exactly as is. I will instead uh, trace those and do all the different alterations to test out. So the first pair I'm going to make now is a pair of good all straight leg jeans because I really like that style. And to be honest, you won't find too many sewing patterns um, catering to that type of style, especially for females. Don't ask me why, because I like my jeans to be straight leg. I mean, I, don't, I like skinny jeans, I like flare jeans, I like boyfriend jeans and all that stuff. But I do wonder why you don't have more options for regular straight leg jeans. So that's why I'm really interested in developing a pattern for that. So ideally, in a dream situation, if this works out and the pattern looks good and you guys like it, uh, in the future, not happening now, but in the future, I would like to release a jean sewing pattern as well. Having more, I think, like a straight leg style, I want to make um, patterns both for female and male, so I have lots of options. That is just a pipe dream <laughs> right now, so don't expect me to magically uh, make a pair of um, a sewing pattern for jeans happen, because that's like way, way beyond uh, the scope of what's happening right now. But that's kind of like a starting uh, block for this as well. So if that works out, that's like my next plan. But now the focus in on just having this base pattern and, and adjust it using the different type of instructions that you will find in the book. So the first pair I'm going to make, as I said, is a pair of straight leg jeans. I'm going to use this really awesome uh, broken twill denim, which is has a zigzag pattern in the back. Um, I bought this when I was in New York last summer. Uh, it's a pretty sturdy quality. It has um, a smidgen, smidgen of the stretch. There was no um, fiber content listed on, on the uh, fabric, but I suspect that it's m probably just 1% uh, of Lycra, no more than that. It's definitely not the type of denim that I would recommend that you use for skinny jeans or stretch jeans. But I do like that it has a tiny bit of stretch because I know that it will more like um, fit better around so I don't have to make the jeans um, too too much ease. I can still make them quite fitted. Um, so that's what I'm going to do first. And that's going to be just a regular uh, zipper. By the way, in the book, uh, I will show two options for uh, making uh, a jean zipper. The first one is based more on the traditional home sewing method, uh, which you have a... Um, built in like fly facing or like a fly extension and the second method that i'm also really excited about to show you guys is the one that is pretty much exactly um, the way it's done in the garment industry so you can use your regular home sewing machines but uh, the end result will look absolutely 100 percent uh, like a pair of um, jeans made in the garment industry. So I've spent a lot of time uh, studying this, uh, ripping jeans apart, all that good stuff, to find um, an assembly way that is close enough uh, that we can do this uh, just in our homes, basically. Because sometimes uh, when you're doing a book like this, because there's definitely a challenge where, uh, I would say all my books are basically based on the premises of looking at where 
techniques, but then try to figure out how can we replicate these uh, using just our home sewing equipment. So that's definitely a challenge, but I have figured out some really <laughs> neat ways now, uh, which I'm really excited to show you guys once the book is done. Um, so that's what I'm going to use for this one. Uh, I will also just use regular pockets. Uh, one thing that I have, which you can actually get your hands on right now, uh, is that I've created a lot of different um, pattern templates. So that was also being included in the book. So sometimes, you know, you have jeans that you may be not feeling like they are um, the way you want them. You like the basic pattern, but you don't, you feel they lack maybe some of the more, say, uh, professional jeans details. But with my book, there will actually be included lots of different pattern templates. So for instance, this is the um, front pocket backing, you know, the patch that is covering the lining of the pattern. Those will be included in several different sizes. Um, the key pocket or the coin pocket, some it depends, it has different, lots of different words, but you know, the tiny pocket that is on top of the front pocket. Um, I will also have several different back pockets um, included. And if you want to get a feel for, for that, you can actually get your hands on something that I created, which is called the Jeans uh, Sewing Toolkit. So there will be a link, of course, in the description section uh, where you can get your hands on a couple of different variations. These are still under development, so some changes will happen between uh, the kit that you will be able to download right now and the final kit, will have, which have even more options. But already now, if you download the kit, you can actually get, for instance, this is the front pocket. I have that in two sizes. Because a lot of this stuff, when you, when you uh, check a lot of home sewing uh, jeans pattern, they actually lack this type of details that you will actually find in most uh, red to wear made jeans. So I'm always fascinated by, you know, um, creating something that is like intersects the professional world with the home sewing world and try to create like a merge these two things together. So that's definitely one of the challenges I'm taking on when I'm creating this book. Um, so again, link of course will be in the uh, description section if you want to get your hands on some of these. So these I'm just going to apply uh, on the basic um, pattern block that I showed you guys. Uh, so I have lots of different options just for that. Um, so that is the first one, this navy one. Uh, I think this is going to be a really pair of nice. I'm not going to make this too tight because right now, again, I'm a little bit over <laughs> super tight jeans. I will make a pair for the book, but personally, uh, I don't know, I'm a little bit over skinny jeans right now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to have a bit more ease in these ones. So this could be a very like classic jeans, the one that you, more like a retro style almost, because I really think that the fabric, because it's so nice and dark, I really think that's super suited for that more classic style. And this one, this was definitely the most expensive <laughs> denim fabric I've ever bought. This is actually Japanese selvage denim. And if you're not familiar with selvage denim, uh, you probably have noticed on some jeans fabric and also of course on ready to wear jeans that they have this, um, this, this is not a frayed edge, it's like an enclosed edge, right? And then it has usually a decorative stitch, usually a red or maybe a blue, sometimes green line running through it like this. Um, so this is traditional selvage denim. That was the way um, it was done using very narrow looms. Now it's getting harder and harder to, to get your hands on, but you can still uh, find it online. Um, this fabric is so stiff and it's not washed yet. Uh, you know, um, we talked about stretch. Well, this one has no stretch. It's very, very rigid. Um, I'm going to wash it now. I know some people really like to not wash the denim until they've worn it a lot, but for comfort's sake, I'm actually going to wash this. And this is actually a pair of jeans that I'm making here. These I will actually not make for myself. <laughs> These I'm making for my husband because he's also modeling a pair of jeans in the book because I, I want to show like um, genderless options. I don't want to have like just females, if that makes sense. I want to make this book like a unisex thing. Um, so I'm going to make this for, this is going to be a very classic silver jean. So they're going to have a straight out seam. They're going to have a button fly and not zipper fly. They're going to have turn ups. They're going to have basically all the things that you um, associate with a really type of classic jeans. And I've never made those myself before, but I have studied a lot. I've talked about, um, interviewed an expert who's um, doing jeans and he has taught me a lot about how to do this. Uh, 
So I'm really excited to create the pair of jeans for him. Uh, he's not actually used uh, to wearing his stiff denim, so I have no idea if he's going to wear them after he's been modeling for the photo shoot. Who knows? Who knows? I have no idea. But um, I'm definitely really um, curious to give this denim a whirl. And as I said, this is woven on a really narrow loom, so it's only slightly over one meter uh, wide. So you need to buy a lot of extra fabric. So it's just so that it's quite expensive for the yardage. It also requires a lot of fabric. Um, the guy that I interviewed for um, to get, you know, the guy that I interviewed the jeans expert, he said that usually in the garment industry, they have they calculate about 2.5 meters. Uh, when they're doing this na narrow selvage denim, but of course that depends on your size and all that stuff. But that, that's definitely more than you will have to than you will use when you're just using a regular like um, 150 centimeters wide denim. So definitely a big difference. Uh, but I'm really excited about this one. So I have lots of really cool details. I've been really studying all the good stuff because I personally. I'm very like interested in the look of heritage denim, uh, but I will say though that this is not the type of denim that I associate with comfort. <laughs> Let's be real. But I'm going to first pre-wash a little sample here uh, to see if that changes the hand and if the fabric bleeds before I push the entire fabric into the washing machine. So I'm definitely going to test that first, but this one I'm super excited about. And of course that also means that in the book, uh, there will also, of course, be instructions for all the kind of stuff that I'm talking about right now. So I think you really uh, will enjoy um, this one if you get the book later on, because this one is definitely going all in on the sort of uh, jeans, um, nerdy stuff. That's definitely what I'm going to do with this project. So it's going to be a lot of content for the book and also hopefully a pair of wearable jeans for my husband. Who knows? Who knows? But yes, I'm really excited to give this very heavy duty fabric a whirl with my home sewing machine. <laughs> wish me luck, wish me luck. And if I said that the Japanese denim was super rigid, well, I'm happy to report that the, the third product I'm planning right now, that is definitely the opposite. This is a really soft, Enzyme wished uh, wash denim, so it has a beautiful softness, nice drape. Now, Enzyme washes is um, a more eco friendly option uh, than uh, the traditional uh, stone washing with a lot of bleach. Um, I cannot for certain say that this one is uh, the best Enzyme, it has no certification, but it is an Enzyme wash, hopefully, it has a bit, a bit uh, more kind to the, to the nature. By the way, in the book as well. Uh, I will have um, a section also about how to make your denim more sustainable and also about the environmental impact of denim. So you can also look forward to that. Yes, it, that's why I say this book takes so long because <laughs> the content is swelling by the minute. Because when you're um, doing something like jeans, it's such a um, complex topic. It's not just sewing step by step because there's so many other things that goes into it, uh, which is also why it's a really fascinating topic to write about. But that's also why this book has taken, um, to be honest, longer than I had expected. But it will be out this year, 2020, uh, in the fall, if all goes to plan. So this one I'm going to do more like a wide leg denim because I know the flow will be so beautiful. Uh, I'm also going to do a curved waistband for this one. Uh, which again, in the book, I will also have instructions for how to create a curved waistband if the jeans pattern that you have picked only have a straight one. Because I know some of you guys, including myself, actually enjoy um, making a curved waistband rather than having one of those rectangular ones. Um, so that's option B as well, and that's what I'm going to use for this one. I probably have a little bit wider waistband as well. One is obviously missing here. And that is the skinny jeans um, version because I have not been able to um, get hold of uh, stretch denim because a lot of the great vendors are not based in Sweden. They are based in other countries. And because of the current situations in spring of 2020, um, not a lot of uh, companies are able to ship globally. And also because of the current situation in the world, uh, I'm also having some issues with focusing uh, because it's so stressful. <laughs> So basically for me, I have no idea how long that will take. I will be kind to myself and just make sure that everything is like well done and I don't exhaust myself trying to make all this stuff happen. That is definitely uh, one of the challenges actually when you're a sewing creator, a content creator as well, that you have to balance 
uh, the project that provides content and the project that doesn't like um, burn you out. So that's also always a dance and I'm definitely threading on the thin line uh, when I'm making this. So I'm basically making four pair of jeans uh, this spring. Classic straight leg, selvage denim, wide leg and skinny. Just to test out and of course as I said in the book all these options will be available on how you can alter your patterns. And now of course I also want to give you some quick jeans tips. First of all, if you're doing a straight waistband, you should definitely cut it across the, the grain, not along the grain, if that makes sense. I hope I say this right in English. Uh, so you shouldn't place it lengthwise, you should place the waistband crosswise when you're cutting out. The reason for that is twofold. First of all, crosswise, even our, the more rigid gem, we usually have a little bit of an ease, uh, but usually woven fabrics are even more uh, stiffer on the length. And you do want your um, waistband to have slightly, slightly a bit of give. So when you put them on, you know, when you just wash the pair of jeans, they feel like super uh, tight. And then you wear them for a couple of days and they start to ease. You want that effect, which is the first reason why it's good um, to cut the jeans band on this length. Even though I know that some instructions and so also some um, industrial made jeans have it this way. The second reason is, uh, especially if you're not pre-washing the fabric is that, as most of you guys already know, woven fabrics have a tendency to shrink more lengthwise and slightly less um, in, in the width. Um, so that means that, and also just because you pre-wash a fabric the first one time, it doesn't mean that that is the only time the fabric will shrink. A lot of fabric will uh, keep shrinking several times or during several washes. Um, so to avoid the fact that you will have a shrinking waistband, which is not a, it's, unless, unless the jeans turn out too big, uh, having a gradually shrinking waistband is not the best feeling in the world, right? Uh, that's pretty <laughs> dreadful feeling. And you're also like, oh, am I expanding? No, it's actually the waistband is actually shrinking this time. Uh, so that's my tip number one when it comes to waistband. Um, my second tip is to... When you are sewing back pockets, and I actually have highly recommend that you check out my video um, Game Changing Tips for Sewing Jeans. Of course, link will be in the description section to that um, video where I talk more in depth about this. But when you are sewing back pockets, and, and basically that's true for any type of patch situation, um, it's really good to have a press template. So for instance, this is the pattern. It looks like this. Um, so this is the pattern. It looks like this. and. This has all the seam allowance and all the stuff. So what you're doing is after you cut this one, in order to create really razor sharp uh, pockets, you actually add a press template on top of this one. So this is actually included in the toolkit that I talked about. You can also you can already download now, but you can of course also get them uh, in the book. Uh, anyways, so what you do is that you place this on top of the fabric, then you press around the seam allowance like this, you shape it and you get a really, really like razor sharp um, edge here. And it maybe look weird, but to be honest, try it if you haven't already and you'll be like blown away what you can do and how the pocket will look like once you're using the templates. It's like a massive, massive improvement. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out that video. You can also, of course, head over to my blog, thelastist.com, because that, again, um, has this uh, tutorial already. And of course, it will be in my book as well. <laughs> my last tips, which I also talk about in my video, Game Changing Tips um, for Sewing Jeans, is to use a template for the top stitching. This you place uh, on the edge of the um, fabric. You can put it um, with tape. Also, some people have told me, told me, and I'm going to try this out too, is to use sandpaper because sandpaper sticks. But you can also use uh, blue tack or something like that, double-sided tape, any type of stick. You just place this on the fabric and then you stitch along this line to create a perfect top stitching without having to use a pen. Uh, or a um, chalk marker, which can be a little bit tricky sometimes. This one, to be, be honest, is much more exact. I found this uh, method in a really good sewing book that is called Sewing Secrets from the Fashion Industry. Uh, link to that book will, of course, be in the description, sec book, uh, description section as well. I've talked so much now. I'm so tired. But I highly recommend that you try this method out as well. And of course, check my other video where I show this more in depth so you can try it for yourself. 
And I also have a tutorial on my blog, which also shows the technique. So you have definitely lots of options to explore. Um, if you want to get to take your top stitching to the next level, I highly recommend that you also get one of these top stitching templates, just easy. Just use them on some sturdier paper, shape them the way you want. And you're set to go. And of course, you can download them as well, as I said, in the description section. Anyways, oh God, I've talked so much now. Uh, I feel like I already made a parody. <laughs> oh, not really. But um, I hope you enjoyed this very deep dive into my gene sewing plans. You got an update about the book. As I said, it will be up uh, in the fall unless more unforeseen things happen. To be honest, I feel a little bit hesitant about saying anything right now because, as we all know, the world is in a big turmoil, um, so anything can happen, but my goal is to have the book out in the second half of 2020, so fingers crossed that will happen. Um, as, we, as I said, all the resources I talk about will be in the description section, links to my other video about sewing jeans, again, in the description section. Um, I think that was about it actually. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and following along this journey. And of course a big thank you to all of you guys that already bought my other two books, Sewing Activewear and Master the Cover Stitch Machine. That means so much to me. And I hope you will also really like my next book. Anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Sit safe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!